So something that I really, really wanted to talk about that I think is very important to fighting games and really just any skill in life that you're trying to learn is the idea or the concept of learning how to learn. This is something that it sounds kind of obvious, right? Like if you want to get better at something, obviously you have to know how to learn. But I don't think it's really that intuitive for most people. And there aren't really a lot of, I guess, resources out there to help people actually get better at learning, right? Of course, there are tons of different guides and whatnot for various things in fighting games out on YouTube and whatever. But that's not what we're going to be talking about today. We're not going to be talking about, you know, how to whiff punish or whatever, which I, I did do a video on that. You should go watch that if you haven't it. on my channel. Highly recommend it. Uh, we're not going to be talking about anti-airing or any of that. We're going to be talking about what are the skills that you need to get better at being self-sufficient at learning. And also, like, what are some common mistakes that I feel like people make when it comes to trying to learn fighting games? So I guess the first question is, like, what does it actually mean to learn how to learn? Like, what does that actually look like? And I feel like it actually goes back to, like, the old saying of you give a man a fish, you feed him for a day. If you teach a man to fish, you feed him for a lifetime, right? I, I feel like very often in fighting games, people tend to just ask questions and they want like direct answers, right? Like they just want a yes or no, black and white type of response. And quite frankly, in fighting games, it's never really like that. You can't just get these very direct yes or no responses. And even in the, the, the rare case that you can, there's still kind of an issue with expecting that type of response where oftentimes people don't even know why the answer they were given is correct, right? So the first thing that I think is really, really crucial when it comes to uh, learning fighting games or anything is the ability to ask questions. And I, I don't mean this like in the literal sense, right? Like anybody can go onto Google and search, how do I beat Akuma? or something like that, right? Anybody could do that. Rather, what I'm talking about is the ability to ask either yourself or other uh, other players questions about what they should be doing, how do they solve something, how do they get better at the game? Those types of questions. I know for me, it's pretty common that I'll have people in my chat or whatever, or really any like top player that streams runs into this all the time. I'll get somebody that'll come into my chat and they'll just be like, how do I fight Kai? And that question is not inherently bad, right? Like it's acknowledging that they have a problem against Kai, which is good. Uh, the first step to solving any problem is understanding that you have a problem. And it's also well-intentioned, right? Like they're trying to get better at the game and they recognize that they have trouble against Kai. So they're trying to fix that. The problem with the question, and this is a very common issue with a lot of fighting game players, is that the question isn't specific enough. And this is really important whether, again, you're asking someone else for help or when you're trying to do your own problem solving. Because again, Kind of the whole idea behind learning how to learn is to become more self-sufficient at learning so you don't always need to go get help of course helping or asking for help is always fair to do right like sometimes you just need help and that's fine being more self-sufficient is really important when it comes to these questions you shouldn't just be asking how do i fight kai you should be asking questions to yourself about what is it about kai that you're having issues with are you having issues in neutral are you having issues on defense are you having issues anti-airing him are you having issues on the ground are you having issues approaching kai are you having issues keeping kai away should you even be approaching kai should you even be trying to keep him away should you be approaching when it comes to fighting games one of the most important skills you can have is the ability to Kind of continuously ask yourself questions to get to the heart of whatever the problem is that you're having in them. This doesn't just have to apply to like a matchup, right? You could be like, man, I'm kind of bad at anti -airing. I wonder why. People always are able to jump over my normals and they just smack me in the head and I get sad. So you need to be able to ask yourself, like, are you predictable with your normals? Is your anti -air whiffing? Is your anti -air getting stuffed? Are you just not thinking about people jumping? Like, there's a lot of questions you can ask yourself to get better at figuring out what the solution even is because like I was saying, first step to fixing a problem is understanding the problem, but you need to understand what the specific problem is and not just the general one, right? It's not just you have trouble against Kai, you need to know what you have trouble against Kai. Because even if you're trying to ask other people questions, like if you're gonna go into some top player's chat and ask them how to fight Kai, it's such a broad question that like the answer you're gonna get isn't going to be the quality that you want, right? If you come in and ask me how to fight Kai, I don't know what you're struggling against with him, right? I don't know what types of Kai players you're fighting. The ability to ask questions and really get to the bottom of what the problem is is really important. Obviously, there's a whole nother skill set to, you know, not just identifying what the issue is, but then you have to be able to fix it, right? Like how do you assess what your options are to get better at your problem that you're having? 
which is kind of a, a whole nother discussion that we could have. But I do think one of the most important skills and frankly, something I think a lot of people are bad at is being able to ask questions, uh, not just towards other players, but to themselves as well. I think another really important skill when it comes to learning fighting games, this is probably the one that is the hardest for a lot of players to, I guess, wrap their head around because it's honestly very like unintuitive. It doesn't feel natural at all. I can't really stress this one enough. Like if you take anything from this video, it's probably what I'm about to say next. In fighting games, you cannot learn from results-based learning very effectively. What I mean by that is that in fighting games, you can do something that is bad and it works. And you can do something that is good and it didn't work in the moment, whether it be because of your own execution, because of your own timing, whatever it may have been. A lot of players, and I don't blame them because it's kind of naturally how humans work, they look towards results to base whether something was good or not or whether they're getting better or not. And that's not really how fighting games work, to be honest. And I don't just mean results in terms of like, you know, I won a tournament or I won a match or I won a set or whatever. I mean results of like even just in the moment of like, I did this thing and it worked. That means that it was good. Just because something worked in a fighting game doesn't mean that it was good to do. Again, similar on in reverse, just because something didn't work doesn't mean that was bad to do. Maybe you just need to get better at doing that thing rather than that thing being bad, right? It's just really hard to get over the kind of natural way of thinking of like something worked. So it was good to do. And a lot of players really get stuck in that. And it's very common in like the lower or mid-level players where, especially the players who primarily just kind of play online matchmaking, they don't really play long sets with other players. Frequently, these players will rely on what we would call gimmicks, right? Where they rely on certain strategies that either work because people don't know the answers to them or they aren't good enough to have the answers ready in the moment, right? Like they can't think fast enough, they can't act fast enough. So these players that rely on these, frankly, unreliable strategies will do well against those players. But whenever they play someone that's a little bit stronger, they'll tend to really struggle and fall apart because those players are good enough to handle these things that are not strong, reliable strategies. Oh, right. Yeah, I mean, like, obviously the question from that point, right? Like, okay, if you can't use results, to decide whether you're getting better or whether certain things are good to do or not. The, the question then is how do you decide what is a good decision? How do you evaluate all of the things that can happen in a fighting game? And how do you assess what ones are good, what ones are bad? That in and of itself is honestly a whole nother video topic that I could do because that goes into weighing risk rewards, weighing uh, the odds of certain things working. Like there's a whole nother skill set that goes into that. And if you guys would like me to talk about that someday, I definitely could. Um, let me know down in like the YouTube comments. If you guys like discussions like this, where I just talk about different topics, I love talking about this stuff. It's my favorite thing in fighting games. So if you want me to talk about it more, just let me know and I'll gladly do. It's just, again, I can't really blame people because it is natural to base whether you're getting better or whether things are good or not based on just whether they work. But in fighting games, it just doesn't really work that way. And sometimes something can be good against some people, but not good against others. And that's another difficult thing to wrap your head around, I think. It also kind of just goes back to what I was saying earlier, where a lot of times I think like lower level players or just newer players, they tend to want just direct yes or no answers to things in fighting games. And that's not really how it works. Uh, there are so many variables that go into what could be a good decision. You know, like if you just wanted to be like, you know, how do I beat Soul doing Gunflame? There's like seven different answers you could do to beat Soul doing Gunflame. It's all dependent on spacings and timings and what resources you have available or resources they have available. And whenever you kind of get outside of that mindset of things have to have yes or no answers, it actually becomes much easier to start developing responses. You start learning the value of having multiple responses to something and not just looking for a yes or no answer. And also, when you start worrying more about the whys something is good rather than just what the answer is, right? If someone just tells you what you should do, you actually want to figure out why you should be doing that. Like ask, why is this what I'm doing in neutral? Why is this what I should do in pressure? Why is this a combo I should do from the situation? Why is this the setup I should do from this combo? Too many players, I feel like, just try to follow, you know, footsteps or guides or whatever of what they see. And th that's like a fine place to start, but you definitely do need to at some point start expanding and Going back to what I was saying earlier, have the ability to ask questions to start getting better understanding of things, better conclusions, and the ability to come to your own conclusions instead of just always having to kind 
kind of seek outside information, I guess. Yeah, that's actually a really important tip, I think, for uh, learning how to learn is just learning to, I guess, be happy with like the small results, right? Like if obviously we all wanted to start winning, right? You want to win every set you play. That's like the idea I feel like in like a lot of lower to mid level players is that they just want to like see their improvement be shown with results like winning matches, right? But that's not how things go. Um, in fighting games, you need to be able to recognize that like maybe you're still losing at set, but you're doing something better in the set, right? Whether it's maybe you're really bad at anti-airing normally and then you started anti-airing a little bit better. That's a win, right? That will start to add up to getting better results in the future. Uh, too often people expect things to just kind of change overnight, right? But getting better at fighting games is a combination of multiple small improvements that add up over time. You don't just kind of become the best player overnight. And you got to be able to look at your small improvements and your small achievements and, and take those and continue to improve other small parts of your gameplay. And don't really stress about getting better results over overnight i guess because something that a lot of players get hung up on is winning honestly which i guess you could say is part of learning to learn as well is that you really have to separate the the need to win when you're trying to improve at fighting games because if you're trying to play to win all the time you're probably not going to be playing in a way that's conclusive to learning and you're probably not going to get better at a lot of things too often whenever i play people in celestial it's very obvious that the person is just trying to win which could go back to what we were talking about earlier where a lot of people have very results based learning mindsets this is how they learn right like i'm getting better because i'm winning when that's not really how it works in fighting games. So I, I definitely think another important part of just having a good learning mindset is stop playing to win and just play to learn because you're going to win a lot more when you learn how to get better instead of just eking out wins with maybe less consistent strategies. Something I've found to separate those things is to focus on one specific thing when I play and if I do the one thing I wanted to focus on, I feel good about it. Yeah, that's that's a great way to learn, right? Even for myself, someone who has won plenty of tournaments, there are many times where I get on and I'm just like, today I'm gonna do this. And that's all I care about. I just wanna get on and do better at this one thing. Whether that thing is like a, maybe an abstract concept in neutral, like I wanna play at a more specific spacing, or it's just, I wanna do this new combo or this new setup. I just go into sets with specific things in mind that I wanna work on. Whether I win or lose isn't as important as whether I did those things or not. I just think developing these skills or being able to learn is really important because I'm sure everyone in the chat, everyone in the comments, and myself even, we've all had times in fighting games where we felt like lost, right? We didn't know what to do. We felt like we were stuck. We were plateauing. That is pretty much common for any player. And being able to be better at learning will make that happen a lot less often. And you'll be better at getting over those humps when they come up because you're going to have developed a better skill set for learning uh, kind of on your own time. And honestly, I guess my last tip for just learning how to learn is just like, be easy on yourself. Fighting game players, this is rich coming from me, but fighting game players are often too hard on, on themselves. And you really need to realize that success is not built overnight. And it's also not a straight line of success. Sometimes you're going to do a little bit worse at things one day. And then the next day you'll do better. And the next day, maybe you'll do about the same. You know? just need to be easy on yourself. Think about the long term and not the short term. I feel like these are all important concepts when it comes to getting better to learn. And frankly, there's more to this topic as well that I could talk about. Maybe we'll come back to this topic in the future. And if you guys would like me to do that, please do let me know. Uh, and if you enjoyed this video, please drop a like and consider subscribing. It would really help me out. I would greatly appreciate it. You can also catch me over on Twitch. You can find the link in the description down below. You can hang out with us live and we do talks like these all the time. Also, if you're interested, I do coaching as well now. If you wanted to hit me up about that, you can hit me up either on Twitter or on Discord. I also have a Metify. You can find that link down in the description Thank below you if you'd like to set it up through there. But I think that's a do it for this one, guys. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed. I'll see you in the next one.